Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar. I see we have quite an audience. Over 150 people joined us, uh, which is fantastic. And thank you for your time um, to learn more about vision. This webinar is the first one of many to follow. We uh, will dedicate particular webinars to various functions or features of uh, vision. As some of you know, vision has many interesting uh, tools and functions which are helping doctors and technicians. But today, because it's, it's a special event, we want to focus on the most intriguing part, on uh, handling complex cases with vision. And before we start, I'd like to make a few notes. First, uh, it is a demo webinar. So we will be focusing on technical properties and features of the software rather than clinical aspects of the case. We have chosen pretty peculiar, interesting case for you to see how vision works, but uh, we are in no way imposing any instructions or teaching you how to make setups. Our philosophy that uh, it's always a doctor who decides how his or her patient must be treated. Second, given the format, we unfortunately have to skip some parts uh, of uh, the software. So we will not be showing segmentation or roots analysis or sculpting or post-processing and only setup and staging. Those parts are amazing on their own and we definitely will make uh, dedicated webinars. But today we just want to show you how vision helps with uh, complex cases. And third, please uh, send your questions to the comments side uh, here. And uh, before the end of this webinar, I will try to address most of them. If we don't have time, we will get back to you after the webinar, addressing all your questions or issues. So before we start, again, wanted to thank you and say that Vision is indeed a spectacular treatment plan. We have worked a lot uh, in order to make it as uh, loved by doctors as possible. It is used today for making thousands and thousands of ca cases by enterprises and doctors all around the world. And I'm sure you also will find a good friend, a digital assistant in Vision, which can help uh, uh, in your practice as well. I'll give just one example. One of our customers reduced time they spent for segmentation from 90 minutes to two minutes, which I think is quite remarkable. And uh, I'm sure vision will impact the orthodontic market in good way. And I, I'm very grateful that you all gathered here to see what we can do. So I want to invite my brilliant colleague, Maria Caro, who will be running this webinar and she will explain how it works. So, your show now. Thank you, Kamzad, for the introduction and good day, everyone. I am really excited to be one of your hosts today. Thank you for attending and we truly appreciate you taking time from your schedule to attend. As Kamzad mentioned, my name is Maria Caro and I am a digital application specialist at SoftSmile. Uh, part of my role at SoftSmile is to educate our users on vision treatment planning software and to share a little bit about my experience and my journey in digital uh, dentistry. Um, after graduation from dental technician school, I went to work in the lab setting and I became a CDT. And then I decided that I wanted to try working in the mouth instead of on models. So I went ahead and became a CDA and worked in the clinical setting. And in the last couple of years, uh, my focus has been on education and helping labs and clinics integrate the digital technology into their workflows uh, with intraoral scanners, desktop scanners, 3D printers. So it's been really exciting to see how our industry has evolved with technology. In the short time that we have today, I, I really hope to show you how user-friendly vision treatment planning is. Um, the features that comes out mentioned we'd like to focus on today are, you know, tools that will develop treatment plans that we have full control of uh, in terms of the timeline of the engagement of every tooth, 
uh, the engagement of the accessories like attachments and bite ramps, elastics, pontics, and even um, interproximal reduction. So hopefully we'll be able to get through everything and maybe even squeeze in a few additional um, tools that we have like Space Manager, which uh, helps establish uh, a quicker uh, setups and an approximal reduction. And so hopefully we'll get to that. The features that Kamzat did mention that we won't uh, be showing today, uh, like an approximal reduction and the um, uh, sculpting, you can access our YouTube channel. And we have two to three minute uh, videos as tutorials that you can uh, look at and review at your leisure. And as um, you know, if you take note of your screen and just get a little familiar with it, you'll notice that we have a uh, comment section and below you'll be able to type in your questions and our team behind the scenes will be gathering them for our Q&A towards the end. So I believe that at this point, you could probably already see our case uh, on your screen. And as we review the case a little bit, we'll notice that we have a case that has some upper and lower uh, anterior crowding, uh, a deep bite, uh, also a unilateral uh, cross bite. And so again, we'll focus on how we achieved uh, creating a, a complete treatment plan for the case and not so much on what we moved and didn't move. But so in order to begin, I'm going to go ahead and open up our treatment plan. And then we'll focus on our upper arch first. And as you can see, we're at the malocclusion. And on the left side of your screen, we'll see the staging table. And we call it the staging table Y because we have full control of everything that happens inside that table. We have full control of the timeline of engagement of every tooth. And what I mean by that is that when we create our setups, we have the option to uh, take the timeline for that specific tooth and extend it later in the treatment plan or really early on in the treatment plan. And as you can see, for example, as I scroll down the timeline, um, you're gonna be able to see the shifting and the distalization of our teeth and the engagement of some of our accessories. And by accessories, I mean our tools that we use for attachments, uh, bite ramps, elastics, and pontics. So as we scroll down, you'll see the engagement of our, two, our uh, posterior teeth and also the engagement of our pontic that we are, we've placed to hold the space. And as we scroll down, you can begin to see our bite ramp activate, distalization, and then I'm gonna just look a little bit more facial so you can see the engagement of our attachments and also what the elastics look like and when they engage throughout the treatment plan. Now, as you notice, things also disappear during the treatment plan. And that's because we have full control of what until when they activate and when they disactivate during the treatment plan. So as we go back towards the malocclusion of the treatment plan, get a bit a bit of a better visual. You can see how the case progresses. So how does this happen? How do we add these accessories and how do we control the timeline for uh, the accessories? As you look at the top of the of the treatment plan and we scroll down a little bit, Next to some of the teeth, when these accessories activate, you'll be able to see a little arrow pop up right next to the tooth that it is attached to. So for example, here on tooth one, two, when we click on the little arrow, we see A for attachment. And then on tooth one, one, we can open that up and we see B for the bite ramp. So how do we manipulate these? We, once we place them, and we'll get to placing them also in a little bit, but I did want you to see uh, and understand what we're looking at before we go in and add them. So we can go ahead and grab the bite ramp and extend the lifetime of that bite ramp and then have it engage whenever we want. 
later in the treatment plan or really early on in the treatment plan. Same thing for the attachment. When we open it up, we can go ahead and extend the feature or pause it for later in the treatment plan. And the same thing will go for all our uh, accessories. So the elastics as well. So when I show you the elastic, you can see that it engages in a liner nine, but I can always extend it and have it pop up a little bit earlier in the treatment plan if I want it to. And that is how our stage and table really works. We have full range and control of the engagement of everything that we uh, attach to our teeth, as well as the movements and engagements of the teeth themselves. As we look at the lower, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the lower real quick. And I'm gonna switch to my lower treatment plan, which is at the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna switch from upper to lower. I want you to take note that in this particular uh, arch, we have these two hexagons at the top. Now these two hexagons really represent our inner proximal reduction, which I'll also show you in a little bit and how we, how we uh, create that. But once uh, we've executed the inner proximal reduction, you can see that it is documented in the case uh, immediately in the treatment plan. But the great thing is that we also have full control of the value of that IPR. We can add or decrease some of the value of an approximate reduction. And we also have full control of when we execute that treat, uh, the approximate reduction within the treatment plan. So like I said, in the staging table, we have full control. So as I scroll down, on the lower K uh, arch, you'll begin to see how we distalized the posteriors, had a little bit of an approximal reduction, and then our anteriors began to engage and accommodate to the final position. Now, what you'll notice also, for example, on tooth 41, is that we have these bullets that are being placed within the timeline. These bullets we call intermediate key points. What these bullets do is when we have a intermediate collision within the treatment plan that we want to go ahead and adjust, we create these key points that allow us to move the tooth uh, in a different direction, trying to avoid the collision itself. So how do we do this? We can select, for example, tooth 144, uh, and then in the timeline, we can double click onto that particular tooth and create a key point. And as soon as we create the key point, you'll be able to see the gizmo appear with the arrows in which we can manipulate the change of movement in order to avoid that specific collision that may be happening. So that's another uh, thing that we can control. So now we're gonna go ahead and go back to our upper and then I'm gonna show you how to add these accessories. So we know we have an attachment and a bite ramp. So I'm gonna go ahead and select another tooth to go ahead and add the attachment. So we simply select the icon for attachments. A drop-down menu will appear and we'll select from the drop-down menu the form that we wish to use based off on our needs. Once we select the attachment, we'll hover over the tooth, whichever tooth it may be that you want to place it on and when we right click onto that, you'll see the gizmo appear. So the gizmo itself will help us adjust the angulation of the attachment, but we have full control of the scale and how much it engages, meaning we can extrude the attachment further. So I'm just gonna turn so we could see a little better. We have control of how much we engage or we intrude the attachment further into the tooth, as well as we have control of the width and the length. So we have control of placement, adjustment, and then the scale. And as you can see, now on tooth one three, there's an A attached which represents the attachment. And then we can again manipulate the timeline so it begins to activate and 
deactivate add a line or 20. So we'll move on to the byte ramps. Same thing, select our icon, use the drop down menu, select one of the two options, hover over the tooth in which you want to place it in, right click, and just like the attachment, we have control of the angulation and placement if we want to go further in a different direction of the tooth. Another great feature we have is when you're placing your bite ramps, if we'd like to open up the lower and we can right click on our arch itself and have it a bit more transparent so we can gauge in the placement. The bite ramp itself again has the same options as the attachment. We have the level of intrusion or extrusion the width and the length of the scale of that bite ramp. And again, now on tooth two one, we have the B representing the bite ramp. And again, we can manipulate it and extend it and have it last as long as we want within the treatment plan. We'll go over the elastics now. So we know we have an elastic here and I believe I have a button one there. So we'll go ahead and place it in a different tooth. And again, in the, the form that you wish to apply can be selected based on what the doctor's parameters are for their button. And we can manipulate the form and make adjustments. Same thing if we wanted to add a hook, we can make adjustments. To represent the form we like. So we'll just scroll down the timeline and you can visualize when the things are going to be activating. And again, full control of the range. Next, we'll go into our Pontic. So we do have a Pontic already, but just to show you what that would look like in adding an additional Pontic, when we click on the icon, we have a little table uh, open up and we have the option to select from either our tooth library or we have the option to clone our patient's tooth from their arch. So we'll select the patient. Then we have to select the tooth that we'd like to clone. So we could choose either uh, one five or one four to represent another bicuspid here. We can choose one five. So we'll select from the drop down menu one five, and then place it in the vicinity of where you'd like to place the tooth. Since we have missing 24 and 25 and 26, we'll just place it in the vicinity and add the Pontic. And then we have the option to begin manipulation of the placement, adjustment, any rotations, intrusion. We also have the option to, when we right click over the Pontic, we have the option to scale. and manipulate, so you get the idea. Okay, so now we have an additional Pontic, which next to tooth 23, we have P1 and P2, I'm sorry, P1 and uh, P1 for, two, for tooth 25. So as we scroll, we can see the Pontic reappear. So now that we've learned how we can manipulate things in the treatment plan or in the staging table, how we can control 
when we uh, this lies or when the tooth is engaging in which particular aligner itself. Now we're going to go into the part where we can use the space manager and some of the other features that we'd like to show you. So I'm just gonna activate that case. So one of the things we really like to show is how Space Manager works to help save time in our, in our uh, setups. So for example, we have full collisions happening in the interior of these teeth, and I'm gonna show you with our overlay what the position or the original position of the teeth were. And I'm gonna open up my staging table so you can see this is the original position, and this is the final position where we're manipulating the teeth. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and generate the sequence of the liners. I'm going to show you how to use Space Manager to distribute spacing or collisions. Also um, with spaces, for example, on our lower, I'm just gonna activate my lower real quick. And I'm gonna activate my collisions option, which allows us to see spacing between the, 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 the teeth and as you can see, we have quite a lot of space distributed in the case. So I'll show you with the collisions first and using the space manager, but we can manipulate the spacing or the collisions. So for example, here we have a variety of values um, between the interiors and we don't have a lot of space to work with. So we really probably do have to ex uh, execute IPR so in order to do that, we can either execute it with the values that we see here, but if we wanna to try to get uh, more equal amounts distributed amongst the selected teeth, then we can do that by selecting the group. And the first tooth that I selected is gonna be my anchor tooth. And when I right click onto it, I have the option for space manager. So as I click on distribute across the width, I want you to notice the values and undo, I'll undo the action so you can see the values from where they were to where they are after I execute the action. There we go. So now we have uh, equal amounts distributed amongst the selected group, and that allows us to have a better control of how much IPR can be done within the case. If you also choose, we can begin to push the IPR towards the distalization of uh, the canines or the distal part of the canines in order to have a, no IPR in the anteriors. So we'll select the group of teeth, and I'll say to my anchor tooth to dis to align all the teeth in ideal contact to my anchor tooth. By doing this, every single tooth will align to its to next to itself to the I'm sorry will align to the uh, tooth next to it, and then it'll go ahead and push the inapproximal reduction to the distal of the canines, which can handle a little bit more. So that way we. Um, do not do any inapproximal reduction on the uh, centrals or the laterals. So that's one way to use the space manager. The other way is when we're doing space, manipulating the spaces in this arch, so we can go ahead and choose a specific tooth and use the space manager, use the distribute of across the width, and as you can see, It'll distribute either the space equally, so I'll undo the action, so we have 139 and 0.95, and when I redo, it distributes the spacing. We can also have all the teeth aligned to one specific tooth, so I'm going to go ahead and select these three and ask the software to align it to either this tooth or my most distal or my most mesial tooth. 
So you can see now that the space is now only on the mesial of the lateral. So how do we create setups quicker? So for example, here, I'm gonna select this particular tooth as my anchor point. I'm gonna select every other tooth and I'm gonna ask for everything to align into ideal contact to this particular tooth. So now I've eliminated all my spacing and every single tooth has aligned in ideal contact. So that's one way to use Space Manager. Other options or uh, tools, are we have lock, so we can select a specific tooth. We can right click and lock it so it doesn't move within the uh, treatment plan. And we also have the semi-transparency, which allows us to see either a group of teeth or an individual tooth. So we can, we can select the group. And have those semi-transparent. And we can also select a specific tooth, even though we're in a treatment, and we can sculpt. So we do have the option to smooth, intrude, or extrude the surface of the tooth while we're managing our treatment plan. So now we're going to go up to our upper again, and I'm going to show you how to execute in a proximal reduction and how that is documented onto the treatment plan. So in this particular case, we have no treatment plan yet. We're still working in the final position. So we're going to go ahead. We've aligned all our anteriors to ideal position. We have IPR that has to be executed. And in order for us to execute it, we're going to use the icon separation. We have multiple IPR button. So when we execute this, you're going to see the IPR on our upper. Let me switch back to my upper treatment plan. So I'm going to undo. So you can see that the treat the, the interproximal reduction will show up when I execute it again. As you can see here now on tooth 1.4, we have 0.2. And on two, three, we have 0.4 of IPR. And again, we can increase the value if we feel we need to, or we can shift the interproximal reduction within the treatment plan. And how do we generate a treatment plan? So we're going to go toward the bottom of our chart or our treatment plan staging table. We're going to select stepping. And in this stage here, we place the value of speed in, in which we want the specific movements to be executed. Here's where you'll be, uh, you'll decide how aggressive or how passive you wanna be in your treatment plan. So each cell is active, so you can enter the value of speed for the particular movement. We'll go ahead and click on apply. And then as you can see, a sequence has been created. And if we look at our lower, a sequence has also been created for our lower. So the next thing I want to address is the red lines that you see here. These red lines right now represent what we call intermediate collisions. So this is as I scroll down uh, the treatment plan. Let's go up. And as we move down, we can see these intermediate uh, collisions happening, and they're in red in the movements. So how do we fix these? The idea is to resolve these issues. So we can do it two ways. And I, one of them I mentioned before, which was by creating intermediate key points or extending the timeline of the specific tooth and they don't always resolve at that specific moment. But if we go, uh, if we shorten the timeline of the tooth and it turns red, it means that the speed of that tooth is moving faster than, the, than what we declared in our parameters. So the parameters are in this table and based off of the movement that I just uh, shortened the timeline, it turned red saying you're moving too fast based on those parameters that you added. So we'll go ahead and manipulate. And if that doesn't work, we'll, we'll use the intermediate key points or we can use the staging to manipulate when a specific tooth moves in order to relieve those intermediate uh, collisions that are happening.
So as you can see, we can create more aligners or less aligners by doing that. So what I'll do is if I can't resolve the case by extending the timeline, then I'll use the intermediate key point. I'll double click on my line and then I'll have to readjust the type of movement that is happening in order for that collision to not happen. Another thing that we can do is pause a specific treatment. So if we wanted to go ahead and have the tooth pause for a particular aligner, we can use control and separate the movement from the timeline, have it pause and skip a specific aligner. For example, here we are skipping seven. So those are all ways that we can uh, use to manipulate the collisions that are happening. So now that we've adjusted and manipulated these, on the right hand of the screen, you'll be able to see the amount of aligners that have been created for each arch. You have a uh, sequence or a timeline that starts from the very beginning all the way through the entire sequence of aligners so you can visually see what's happening. And you can pause it at any time. You can always go back or go forward a step. Another thing we can also visualize is the, like I mentioned before, the speed. We can also use the drop down menu and select how, how fast any particular tooth is moving within the treatment. And we can see the values pop up for each specific tooth or each timeline, as well as the intermediate collisions that we just saw. The additional things that we can also visualize, we can always hide some of the treatment plan that's happening in terms of the uh, accessories that we have. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my first case. And then we can see how those can be hidden. So on the right side, we have the view settings. So if you're presenting the case to your patients, we can always eliminate the visualization of the accessories. So they're not showing when you're presenting the treatment plan. The, I think the other thing that we could possibly show is I'm going to present another case here. And I wanted to show you the option for digits, which we can go ahead and la label our aligners and models. So as you can see here, I'm going to click play and we'll be able to see that automatically doing expert will be able to see our teeth get labeled as well as our trimming line. So these are, th this is in the post-processing stage. And I think that will wrap it up for today um, on, on my end. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to Kamzat and maybe answer some of your questions. Maria, thank you very much for uh, amazing presentation. I will try to respond to the questions which uh, we see in the comment side. And uh, 
let's start with uh, ginger uh, maria wasn't uh, demonstrating the latest version of uh, uh, of the software yes sometimes uh, there can be issues with ginger but they are fixed through sculpting however those are pretty rare um, and yet uh, everyone knows ginger is very sensitive and um, tricky part of the software so answering your question yes there are sometimes issues they can be fixed uh, however, the ginger which we will release next year will not have any issues at all. And this will be just uh, the best ginger on the market. Even this one, which we have, is pretty, pretty good. But uh, next year we're releasing new ginger. Uh, next question is from uh, Ikea from Spain. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we met at AEO. So thanks for joining the webinar. Uh, we can copy and paste, paste the attachments. So we will show it at the next version. And uh, yes, uh, you can import your own attachments and pointings and other auxiliaries. So you can use your own library for that. Then um, regarding separating different kinds of movement during staging, I, I think uh, Maria demonstrated that, but it is the case, yes, staging is uh, very advanced and you, of course, can uh, use different uh, kinds of movement for that. Uh, Kasim, please uh, come to all our webinars. I'm sure you will have enough uh, experience with uh, software. Uh, next question about virtual articulator. We do have virtual articulator and we do have uh, by jump. We will be showing it to you uh, early next year. So we do have that. Regarding the pricing policy, we charge only for the exported cases. So when you are happy with the treatment plan and when you agreed with your patient or with your client that uh, the case is ready, we will charge you $50 per case. And uh, of course, based on volumes, we can discuss discounts, but that's uh, a standard pricing. The next uh, about extra movements during the staging. Um, I assume it's a um, overcorrection and uh, we also do have that. We, we, we can do it. Uh, then how do we calculate the movement per step after adding the key point? I'm not sure I entirely understand the question. Uh, there, there is enough information to show uh, velocity or the distance of the movement. Uh, anyway, we'll get back to you with that. Um, then, there is a question from uh, Jahanzeeb. If both centrals are missing, then what should we use for Pontic? So you can use our Pontic, but I think it's more of a clinical question how to how to treat the case then there is a question between speed max and speed overall again speed max is uh, speed allowed uh, for you to use uh, during the treatment and uh, you uh, and speed overall is just uh, an average uh, average figure. Anyway, we will dedicate a special webinar to staging. It looks like there are a lot of questions about that, and we will we will discuss them. Um, yes, it's possible to remove the gum, the gum absolutely. Extractions are also there. Uh, you you will see them uh, in the next uh, webinar. Uh, Mustafa is asking, can we see the timeline for the upper and lower arches together in the future? I think uh, what we have now in NOP shows timeline for both, but um, maybe we need uh, to get on call and discuss in more detail what actually is the request. Uh, can the software handle sequential digitalization during staging? Yes, uh, the plan to do so, and we, we will make a note to showing you sequential digitalization during the next webinar presentation. 
So looks like we don't have uh, any questions about the software. Anyway, as I said, there will be series of webinars. Please uh, follow us and um, I hope we will address all your questions in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, can, uh, I see question about roots. Uh, I understand it's question about CBCT. It's one of the biggest pieces we're working on and uh, it definitely will be introduced um, in uh, early next year, I hope uh, first quarter of next year. We are working on that and uh, CBCT will be there and I'm sure you will love it. It's, uh, it's a very advanced feature. Uh, Atsumoto, yes, of course, uh, refinements are included. Mm. Um, Eric, no, you can use the software without any attachments, no problem with that. Uh, Dr. Sme, I, I see a question. Can I alter mechanics according to clinical consideration case by on case per case basis? Uh, of course, of course. And uh, there is one, along with CBCT, one pretty exciting um, function we gonna present next year. We do have it, uh, but we didn't demonstrate it yet. It's a uh, forces uh, mechanical calculations and how the software does everything automatically and how forces or mm, uh, resistance of uh, plastic or gingiva are used or everything is taken into account and we will show it to you uh, next time. So I see many familiar faces and names and um, so glad that you all joined us and thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, reach out directly and uh, we will stay in touch. Thank you.